alternative dig talk real issues real talk Welcome. Uh, first of all, apologies. Our network actually got a bit of challenges and it had to, uh, you know, move off. But we are back. Uh, we really, really deeply apologize for that inconvenience that was caused. As we are um, starting off, Doctor was still really talking about his week, and I wanted to start from there. And I start with an issue that has been subsequent. Uh, Doctor, I just wanted to first comment on on the handling of Katonga Bridge. Has this been handled effectively to, to the satisfaction of Ugandans? Because this, this route is used by traders, is used by, to connect different areas, it is used to connect up to Tanzania and Rwanda. Doctor, has this been handled with the utmost urgency that it needs to be, to, to be handled with? Well, uh, on the technical side of what they need to do to cure the breakdown of the of the bridge mm. i am not uh, conversant with uh, the technical mm. uh, possibilities of uh, you know achieving a quick uh, fix for the bridge especially where the bridge is because it's a fairly wide area yes uh, it's not uh, a narrow thing where you can put a temporary bridge easily mm. uh, so f frankly i don't quite know the technical possibilities, options mm. of how to fix it quickly. But what is more important, mm. and I think deserving of focus, is how the bridge itself got uh, into the situation in which it is now, mm. without the warning signals. Exactly. Because, uh, you know, these are very, very, if you have important infrastructural assets, then you must maintain them uh, closely to understand if there is any threat. And, and also to anticipate, to anticipate threats. Exactly. Now, in the case of that Katonga Bridge, it was really destroyed by the government itself more than anybody else because uh, the destruction of the uh, ecosystem that um, uh, is relevant for that bridge meant that the bridge would soon or later be overwhelmed yes. by the water currents as it did yeah. uh, and 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 i think you know even up to now you see when the trouble is when you have no accountable system because up to now there is no focus on the people who allowed the sand mining in that ruera yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. marshlands exactly. uh, because that's where it begins destroying that ecosystem uh, the, 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 the rice uh, growing in the, in, in the marshlands uh, which were licensed yes. by <laughs> they are doing it legally <laughs> licensed and uh, overseen by, by the so that's, that's, that's where the crime is you know and so we destroy or created the environment that destroyed the bridge. But secondly, are the bridges inspected? Are they monitored? Because you see, it's like, uh, for example, lifts in buildings. You know, there are people just press a button, enter a lift, and they go... Uh, to whatever floor they are going, come down. But 
those lifts, because of the nature in which they function, they, they are on, on ropes which are taking them up and down. Those ropes can break <laughs> and, and, and you just fly and hit the floor and become a <laughs> chapati. So there, there, are, there are procedures for maintaining those lifts. They have to be, they are supervisors of lifts who have to sign off yes. every time they have been inspected. If there is any fault, they, if, if it needs maintenance, they must close the lift, you know. Yes. But you find that we are in a country where there are no maintenance uh, systems uh, nearly for everything. Yes. That's how even a road breaks down until it is impossible and until it requires so much money to redo. When it started with uh, a small fault, maybe from an accident, a vehicle overturns, breaks the surface of the road, and nobody immediately seals it. And then water gets in there and starts undermining the road, and in no time you have a big pothole, in no time it is uh, impossible. We're looking at only Katonga, but on that very same road uh, to Kisoro, the, the road is also damaged. In fact, it's, it's also impossible. It's not yeah, so this is what I'm saying. The road maintenance, road maintenance systems yes, sir. have to be interrogated. Are they there? It's not just for Katonga, but all the other bridges. Mm. How are they being maintained? What systems are in place? How are they being monitored uh, is, is the question. And not just bridges, but even the roads, the, the road, the roads themselves. And, uh, and, and very clearly, you know, this Katonga uh, was an accident just waiting to happen uh, from the way the area had been so uh, 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 aggressed by uh, human activity. Uh, that created what we saw, the, you know, the swamps moving down, the rice floating to the lake. And those things which floated into the lake, are we monitoring them? Because they are on the way to the, to the, to the Nile Bridge. You, yeah. you've, you've actually, I wanted to also mention that the Nile Bridge also um, uh, was f flooding recently, I think last week. Or the, 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 yeah, these, these are not just floating into the, into the lake. That is a river that flows through the lake because it goes and it joins the, the, the Akagera River and so on and continues uh, through the lake. Uh, to the bridges that are down the, down the lake. So the, the, this simply calls into question our maintenance systems. And maintenance systems, not just of the roads, but of all infrastructure. You saw what happened to the Isimba, Isimba Dam, yeah, yeah. that uh, it has uh, uh, flooded <laughs> and, yes. and created a lot of uh, problems uh, because, uh, again, in its construction, what were the systems put in place to anticipate those kinds of things and to uh, control them, to monitor, uh, make sure that they don't, they don't actually happen. Um, uh, so uh, uh, this is an area where really we are, uh, it's very wanting. Not you know, across, you've seen all these buildings which are multi-story buildings coming down. Somebody wakes up and all the, uh, you know, five stories they were, they had built, uh, crash have, down. have crashed down. Why? Because there are no systems of uh, maintaining standards in the construction, monitoring to see who is uh, constructing according to that they require the standards or not, materials being used, are they up to standard, you know? Uh, we have um, a Bureau of Standards in the name, but do we really have uh, 
uh, a, a, a serious uh, maintenance of standards of anything. But, but, but the lack of planning, doctor, also um, mesmerizes me to some extent. Because imagine now if uh, a critical infrastructure like the Nile Bridge today uh, crashed down, uh, what, what would it mean to, you, to Uganda? Because now that is an outlet that is bringing each and everything literally that we have here. We have a reactionary system of, of, of leadership that we always have to wait for a problem. Because if, if we have been seeing the human activities you have talked about at Katonga that have been happening for over a while, didn't we have to anticipate to know that at a time, maybe in the future, this may happen? Because now Nile Bridge also flooded. In case the flood is too much that takes away that bridge, imagine such a scenario. Don't we have planners for this country that sit there to, to really plan for Uganda? Where are we going? You see, that lamentation is a lamentation of all Ugandans. Uh, I don't think anybody can, up to now, still pretend that we have a serious government that plans in the interest of the people and implements its plans and uh, uh, you know maintains the focus on the public good on the common good that, that it's not there we and and this is what we have been saying that we simply have a cabal of 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 of, of, of thieves really <laughs> in the charge of the country it's a mafia state you know where they extract and uh, uh, you know, for their own benefit, primarily, mm. and and only attend to public interests, uh, either by accident or or in the process of serving their private good, and uh, and unless that is solved, unless that is uh, that fundamental defect mm. of the. Uh, governance system in our country is solved, mm. then we are going to continue having disaster upon disaster. You, 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 the, the environmental degradation that has taken place under the watch, direct watch of this junta, this four, nearly 40 year junta, the environmental destruction is humongous. You know? Mm. Um, I, I told you just this weekend, you know, I was coming from a burial in Kanungu. Mm. Now, before you get into Kanungu, you pass through very uh, hilly, mountainous mm. uh, terrain. In those mountain, um, you know, sharp uh, inclinations, there were natural forests that uh, took care of how the rainwater would come down, be sieved, the mm -hmm. soil would not be, uh, you know, Running for, just down uh, like going that. down with the runaway water mm -hmm. uh, into the rivers, desilting the rivers and causing uh, all these floodings and so on to take place. It, it was not happening because of the forests, the natural forests, that were in all those areas. These have been totally dismantled mm. as these people calling themselves government mm. have, in fact, they have been actively involved in dismantling them uh, for timber, <laughs> mm. <laughs> cutting trees for timber, and what, what they have been. So we have a rogue regime, a rogue mafia state that has absolutely no interest in the public good, mm. cannot pretend to have any interest in the public good, and, um, and therefore the planning you are talking about uh, is planning for themselves, not for the public good, and uh, uh, the disasters we are going to suffer is a consequence of that. Across, whether it's a, uh, um, you know, in the infrastructure, you, you, you see people construct a road at a huge price. And the road, by the end of three years, is, <laughs> is no. potholes, you know. And, uh, you know, like that car, car road where 
people are now passing. Express. No, they can road through Zimbabwe. Oh, oh, the MPG Zimbabwe. The, yes, the, the, the detour yeah. that yeah. Uh, one has to make to get to Masaka from yes. MPG. Yes. That is a new, uh, it's a new car road that has been uh, uh, constructed. And, and you know, it, it's amazing how you hear, you know, the, the, the people in the government praise themselves for tarmacking mm. these roads. They're around 12,000 kilometers. Yes. So. If you can see the type of roads they talk about, it's like a panya road. It's like, a, you know, a mouse. <laughs> very narrow and already there are uncountable accidents on yeah. that car road because it is days that we've been yes because it, it in fact uh, the other day it was closed because of an accident that closed it <laughs> a truck that <laughs> collapsed because they are very very narrow roads uh very you know uh, i think i don't know whether they, they the kind of engineering designs they sharp corners on this very narrow road yes. you know many blind spots yes uh, and 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 so with the traffic now diverted there first of all uh the heavy trucks that uh, were on a slightly better road uh, to Masaka are going to destroy this one even if they spend they their, already destroyed uh, even if they spend their uh, uh, one month it will it will be it will be gone mm. but you know the kind of uh, uh, you know t t type of 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 of, 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 infrastructure, of roads and infrastructure that uh, that uh, that we have is is appalling and, and, and so, whether it's the infrastructure, whether it is the environment, whether it is, uh, uh, you know, the, the water sources and so on, the kind of degeneration and decay that has taken place in these four tiers is unbelievable. And, and, and basically, you see, one cannot congratulate themselves just that I have built a road. Because a road... Uh, is, is it's like the British were building roads to take away our our assets. Mm. We could not jubilate with them for building us a road that we cannot benefit from ourselves. It was just a, 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 tu a tube mm. to suck. <laughs> it was <laughs> never for you. It is never for And that's what these roads are like, you know. Uh, in, in, even that, like that car road will... Yes, a, a, a few people, uh, you know, will, will take money and buy cows there from peasants uh, very cheaply. <laughs> they say that Kato Corridor is, is one of the wealthiest areas. That's what the president says. So well, it, yes, I mean, it, it, there has been a revolution, frankly, you know, there uh, uh, over the last... But it's not a revolution because of the... Uh, a, a, a organic growth that is there. Okay. It is because people from the Kato Corridor are the thieves here. <laughs> you know, we are going to talk about the budget. Yes. The budget is is ends up ends up ends up more there than anywhere else. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so when you see the growth there, you say, you know, because if they could make it happen there, why can't they make it happen? in other areas Everywhere. yes you know the, they are cattle keepers even in uh, in karamoja <laughs> in, in the teso they were very thriving cattle keepers in teso in lango <laughs> <laughs> doctor thank you um uh, those who have joined in uh, please send in your messages just suggest what do you think we can do as a community or what is our role as a population today in solving the infrastructure problem because now the infrastructure problem does not have any side that it goes on. Each and everybody is a victim of the infrastructure breakdown that we have. When you drive your, ro your, your car on a road that has potholes each and everywhere, it is you who's going to be going for service each and every day. So, suggest what you think can be done to make uh, you know, the, the, the infrastructure become better because it is really appealing and uh, it's, it's really distressing to look at 
the quality of the roads we have, and of course, the, the, the speed at which uh, these people who are rectifying these roads are actually working. Doctor, I want us to delve into another issue, and this is an issue of gun crime. For, for the past, I think, three weeks or a month, every time you come on this show, we have to talk about gun crime. Each and every time. When you leave, the, because I remember the last time I had you, when, I, when we, we parted, that evening, Jaja Ichuli was short, that very evening. Today, as we come for this show, yesterday, an, another policeman shot a UPDF officer in Barara yesterday. And this so has been... Late evening. Late evening, around 6 p.m. This has been happening, I don't know, for this entire year, we are seeing these things that are, are happening. Doctor, how did we get here? To, to be that every Saturday we have to talk about people dying because of guns. You see, like I have said, mm. it's not just the guns that we keep on talking about because it keeps on happening. Mm. Nearly everything that we talk about uh, is repetitive. You know, we, we, we keep on repeating it. And we're always lamenting about it. Yes, something. yes, this is the thing. So the situation just keeps on drifting, getting worse, and we keep on talking about it, whether it's the roads that we have been just talking about and the infrastructure. It's not a new story. You know, we've been talking about the infrastructural problems all these years, the health care that is... Uh, uh, you know, non-existent almost now. And, and you're going to start paying for it according to, 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 to the permanent secretary. Well, it's and not it's starting paying for it. Who, yeah, who has, we have been paying Who, who has it. free health care? There is nobody who has free health care <laughs> because the people it. who are supposed to provide free health care don't. Hmm. Uh, whether, even when you go to Mulago, you pay even when... So, but the, the, the crisis in the health care, in education, in infrastructure, in security and policing and all this, mm. is a crisis we have been talking about all these years. A crisis that has now created inability for people to survive. You know, people can hardly survive now because of this mounting crisis. It has been, you know, coming uh, slowly but surely. So nothing has changed. Uh, it has only become worse. So the gun violence that we are seeing, as I have been saying, is largely from three areas. First, it is from a very stressed population, general population, forget about the, 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 the ones with guns, a very stressed population that uh, is angry and hungry, or hungry and angry. You have that in the population. People are, 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 are uh, inflammable now. Anything that strikes a little, somebody blows up. <laughs> that, is the, that is the situation in which people live now. They are, they are just... Uh, because you hear this one has killed his colleague. Yes, he shot them. yes. They had an Every, argument. Everybody shot, is shot living them. on the edge. People are living on the edge. Uh, and... Uh, you, you will see it, whether it's in uh, uh, road rage, you know, people, you, you obstruct a little, you know, his direction or something, and uh, he, he wants to bang into you and whatever, you know. People are living on the edge. Yeah. Now, that living on the edge then finds uh, two problems. First, that there are guns in this country, huge number of guns that cannot be accounted for, that are not in the legal system, 
because guns are, are things that are control uh, the the state has full control over guns or is supposed to have full control over guns must know where all guns are because it is it has the sole uh, authority in importing con um, determining who has a gun and uh, how they are used yeah. it's 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 a, a uh, an absolute uh, preserve of the state nobody has a right to import guns nobody has a right to keep guns except if authorized by the state you see it's not like a car you go in a shop you buy no and that's why all guns have numbers so every it's a every gun must be accounted for that came into uganda that's not how it is there are possibly more guns outside the control of the state than in the control of the state yeah. <laughs> you know, in our country and that is a problem uh, that then those can be used uh, for purposes that are outside the law the guns that are under the control of the state the state has a duty to make sure that they they are used in accordance with the law yes but the others which are outside the state and that's why you know some time back we, we had uh, mr m7 saying they were going to uh, you know uh, get like fingerprints of the yes. or the barrel prints of the of the of the of the guns uh, so <clears throat> that uh, if a gun commits a crime they can identify which gun and so on uh, they, they have done it I have not had uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's impact because there are many guns that they will not uh, be able to uh, to to, to to have their their fingerprints, mm. uh, so the the prevalent the existence of a lot of guns outside the control of the state is a matter that is uh, critical in understanding the gun violence that we have. When you know that they they are in the hands of very stressed <laughs> of people who are on the edge they have guns that are not in the control of the state but, but, but then doctor there are those that have been okay, yes so no, that is the second right? i said first of all mm. is the stress yes, secondly are the guns that are not in control mm. and some of the guns that are not in control of the government of the government mm. were given by the government that's one of the of the things that uh, uh, because the, there is a loose in other words the control by the state itself is very forte I, I, I've been talking about guns that were given by the state to herdsmen in the cattle corridor that you were talking and about. And it brought a lot of attraction to that particular clip of yours saying and people are saying it is inaccurate how do you have this information? I, 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 have, I have said that I have it from first hand because I was a commander there. I was the commander of the mechanized regiment when this was going on. And, and so, and, and even those who used them there, we, we were arresting them and bringing them to our, to our units. So I, I know... Alternative Dig Talk. 
real issues real talk hi rogers can i ask you something uh shoot what does corruption mean well summarily corruption is abuse of public power for personal gain or for the benefit of a group to which one owes allegiance for example when a public office is abused by an official accepting or soliciting a bribe by the way private people can be corrupt too like bribing police officers to escape fines mm, okay so exactly how does that concern me <laughs> well do you pay taxes i guess yeah what does that have to do with this everything because those taxes you pay are supposed to facilitate services you use like water electricity roads construction medicines in hospitals name it hmm okay that is much bigger than i thought but it can be stopped right well yes it can although it may not be as easy as it sounds and here is the reason why corruption roots are grounded in our country's social political economic bureaucratic traditions and policies so what has kept it going this long i mean why don't we stop it well the main reason why it has been here for so long is because institutions are weak either as a result of poorly defined ethical standards of public service weak administrative and financial systems or ineffective watchdog agencies hmm. what can we do to stop it um at a national level we must focus on strengthening the independence and effectiveness of public institutions that fight corruption at a personal level we must commit to never giving a bribe i promise i'll never give a bribe well, that's a great decision you have made me and you now have to spread this message to all our friends if we all do our part corruption will be no more this message is brought to you by alternative digital The alternative dig talk real issues real talk Welcome back from that short commercial break. You're still watching the Interface Show. My name is Ed Guy. I'm still with Dr. Kiza SCJ. As we took a break, Doctor, you are still talking about the issue of some people who are aseptic or about the information that you're giving. Uh, some say that it is inaccurate. Not most of the families there are armed as you were suggesting that there are many, many guns that are in the cattle corridor. You are still elaborating more on that issue. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and the break was obviously forced by the infrastructure, <laughs> <laughs> the infrastructure that we are talking about. Uh, you see, the guns in the cattle corridor, the way they were deployed there, yes, arose from the capture of the ranches, from people who had acquired ranches in the 1960s. Yes. The massacre ranching scheme, the especially and extending you know to all those areas of Maogola, Zimbabwe where these were ranches that were owned mainly by Baganda ranchers mm. but and and they continued even to Bururi they were ranches in Bururi mm. uh, areas and uh, they were taken over by force by government and redistributed mm. to other cattle keepers. They called it the ranch, ranch restructuring scheme. So land was grabbed and grabbed illegally by the state because these people had, uh, had their titles. Mm. Uh, had invested in the ranches and the government grabbed the ranches and distributed them to some cattle keepers. Now, fearing that the owners of the ranches would aggress the invaders of their ranches, mm -hmm. they armed 
the, 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 the grabbers. The land grabbers. So that they protect themselves from the landowners. That is so ironical. <laughs> Doctor, that is extremely ironical. Yes. It is, you're trying to say that someone is siding with injustice. You are, you, you are supporting the person who is stealing from, from the victim. Absolutely. Uh, now, of course, Mr. Museveni has always tried to justify his action, his illegal action, that the ranches had been formed in disregard of the traditional people who had been grazing in those areas, that the ranches had displaced mm. the, the cattle keepers in the first place when they were created in the 1960s. Because, you see, the, uh, uh, which, which is a debatable issue, because th those were areas that were infested with tsetse flies, mm. and so cattle keepers would not uh, survive with their cattle there, and um, if they, those who were there may be migrated or whatever, but there were, not pe there were no people that were effectively evicted mm -hmm. when ranches were created. Mm -hmm. Whether they were created, whether the creation of the ranches was a good policy or not, mm -hmm. they, they, they were vested in certain people as their properties, people who then invested their, their uh, you know, life savings into these ranches. Then overnight, Mr. Museveni uh, brings the cattle keepers, takes, uh, uh, takes over the, the ranches, and now arms the cattle keepers to protect themselves against the ranchers. That is exactly what happened. And as I have said, I was there. So it's not a matter of uh, hearing, I saw. <laughs> I, I was there. You, we, we are disarming <laughs> some people in a certain part of the country here. Yes. In Karamoja. Yes. We are disarming, and this disarmament has been there for a while. Yes. And then we are arming other people. Yes. Who are civilians. Yeah, so the point I was making is simply that some of the guns which are outside state control were actually given by the state. Okay. Illegally. <laughs> if you like. And, and the, though it's not just... And these were machine guns. You are giving them machine guns. And... Um, but also, you know, you find all kinds of people with pistols. Mm. You know? Uh, I, I, I remember seeing... Uh, your fellow journalist Basaja Mivule mm. uh, also wielding a, a, a pistol. These are guns that are distributed. Uh, you, you see all these uh, uh, regime fanatics uh, carrying guns, you know. These are outside, I believe, outside state controlled arms which are regulated by the armed forces law, mm. the UPDF Act, the Police Act, mm. the Prisons Act, mm. the, the sec Security uh, Organizations Act, Even the Firearms Act okay. and the Firearms Act for Civilians. Mm. These are the, armed, the ones who are armed forces and then the Firearms Act for Civilians. Mm. There are many people who hold guns outside those, uh, uh, regulate, those regulations. And some of those were also facilitated by the state. Now, let's come to those who hold guns mm, legally. Legally. Mm. You see, the problem here is that the ones who hold guns legally have a duty to protect injustice. Exactly. <laughs> the, 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 their main duty is to protect those who are unjust in their public affairs, who are, who are stealing public money and therefore living in a lot of privilege, or who have piled a lot of privileges on themselves and are aware of 
mm. and fear the population. So anybody who is anything must be guarded. RDCs must go with three, four guards. RDC is a, a, a representative in a district. Has to be guarded. GISOs, mm. Gomborora Intelligence <laughs> Officer, a sub county intelligence officer, you find they are armed. You, find, you know, it, so we have so many guns moving around protecting people, protecting homes by these armed forces, protecting homes, some of which homes have nothing to do with the armed forces, you know, that are protected, or, or even with the government, private homes, you find somebody, because that person is a relative, maybe of the president or of somebody, he, they have military guards, you know? And, and so you have guns guarding homes, guarding farms, guarding ranches, you know, uh, all over the country where important people have acquired wealth. You have uh, security people, armed people, members of the uniformed forces, guarding them. Uh, you just look in town and see, uh, you know, uh, ministers, the what, with the uh, vehicles carrying soldiers, guarding them. For you to talk about, there, there are people who, who are um, the, 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 the opulent young people, those social media celebrities, also having uh, people with guns. Yeah, the people. social media celebrities, they are not just celebrities. The socialites, they call them. They are not just celebrities, they are, they are appended to the injustice. They have a role in promoting the injustice that is there. So they are guarded by those uh, who are in charge of the unjust system of government that we have. They have to protect those, uh, you, whether I, I, I think you'll find even the musicians. Exactly, I, the like, Brian White. Maybe the, 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 the Bebe or the Bebe what, Kours. you'll find they have, mm. they, they have protection because their role is linked with the promotion and uh, maintenance of the unjust system that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So those who are legally holding guns of the state, they have an unenviable duty of protecting the mafia state, not the people. Mm. See, they should be people's protection Uganda People's Defense Forces should be a force to defend the people of Uganda. The Uganda police should be a, po a force to police the people of Uganda to make sure they are safe. Yeah. That's not what they do. Their duty is to protect the mafia state, the unjust system that has created the, the crisis we are talking about that extracts from the population that has led to a desperate population that has led to a broken down social service sector a broken down infrastructure sector they have to be protected with what they have stolen and the privileges in which they live they have to be protected so you have many guns you'll never find in any other country you know loitering around in the form of protecting all these uh, uh, characters, you know? And, and once you have such a dispersed uh, force, which is now a protection force for, the, for all these characters, it's very difficult to control it because armed forces should are controlled through their units. You know, you, you, are, you are in a battalion, you are in a, a section, you are in a platoon. Every morning you are on a parade, mm. uh, you account for yourself and what you are doing and so on. You are then deployed, you are monitored on your deployment, then you are again accounted for in the morning. Yeah. 
when you have to guard all these uh, good for nothing characters all over the country the people who are guarding farms on which parade will they go to, to be accounted for and to know what, what they are doing and so on you know so there is a lot of fluidity in the management of uh, the formal guns that are in the services so of our country. There is a, also a problem, a supervision problem in the UPDF itself. Yeah. Because if if because the hierarchy, as you've mentioned it, for every ten soldiers there has to be someone who's in charge of them. For every ten soldiers. Yes, but now you see, as I have said, they have been dispersed. If there are four soldiers guarding my farm in the same bubble, or in a Bomba, or in the Bururi, uh, in which section <laughs> they, 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 they are just they, they are not different from Sarashen or <laughs> you know, they, they are now just guard they are guard men uh, who are dispersed all over the place so we have a huge huge force that is dispersed in the guard duties that should never have been there in the first place actually in uh, I think it was in 1988, mm. which was shortly after we came from the bush. Yes, please. Soldiers of Moses Chigongo, who was then vice history, yes. but that time he was vice chairman of a different NRM, mm. not this one, uh, because he was he was then as vice chairman he was a speaker, mm. a speaker of. Uh, of parliament. parliament you know his soldiers the soldiers who were guarding him yes, went and killed the people in Mulago and as a result of that mm. there was an order yes. given by mm, Mr. Museveni mm. to withdraw all soldiers who were on guard duties mm. except those who were guarding active soldiers in active service, yes. you know, uh, who are guarding commanders who are in active service. Uh, that was an order he gave then because the problem was there yes. then. 1988. Eight, eight, yeah. That is uh, 35 uh, years ago. <laughs> has it happened? Absolutely not. It has become much, much worse. So what we have, the, the deployments, the use of armed forces, whether it's the police, whether it's the, 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 the military, is wrong. There is absolutely no reason why soldiers should be guarding other DCs. You know, even the ministers, you know, and, and then you say we have peace which we ushered. Which peace if a minister a normal civilian whom you just the other day named uh, this one is a minister now because you named him a minister now he must be guarded by soldiers why because he, who, who is against him mm -hmm. you know uh, so the the uh, the use of soldiers in the guard duties mm -hmm. more so for even people who have no official role in the government, none whatsoever, you know, relatives, what, uh, the people are there guarding, you know, mm. is a source of this problem. Okay. Lack of, because it makes control, mm. command and control of, uh, uh, of armed people uh, very difficult, almost impossible. Mm. In, in, uh, orderly countries it would be rare to see a, a uniformed soldier alone mm. holding a gun moving yeah. around why, 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 where are you going with your gun alone you know yeah, exactly. <laughs> even a uniformed soldier you know moving would have their movement order permit showing he's moving from his unit 
to go to uh, another place. Allow me to interrupt you, Doctor, in <coughs> that regard. Um, Private Wawide, uh, Ivan, for the, that particular case, they say that his colleague who was owning that gun had left the gun at his home and went to the village. And he left the gun in his house. And Private Wawide, being his roommate, helped himself with the gun. And then Private Wawide, after shooting, carried himself very well and took that gun to CPS without anybody really trying to remember. Yeah, this, so man, this person <coughs> was bad from carrying a gun for six So years. this is why I'm telling you the command and the control. There is, I, 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 the, there is no way you can have an effective command and control of all these uh, soldiers and guns in an environment like that, in a chaotic environment like that, where you have, uh, where, you know, uh, these uh, policemen and uh, army men uh, have turned into a circle, you, you know, guarding thieves, basically, as I have said. <laughs> it's the, the, the wrong people who are guarded. Instead of guarding the population, the whole attention is on guarding official state officials and their relatives, you know? So, command and control is very difficult in those kind of circumstances. Finally, on mm. this matter, mm. is the welfare, the terms of service of those who serve in the formal institutions, in the military, in the police, in the intelligence services, in, in, the, in the prisons, and therefore who are armed by law, what kind of welfare do they have? What kind of terms of service do they have? You know, they live in a squalor. They live uh, below what is acceptable for a human being. You know, their habitation, the mm. houses in which they live, Yes, should not be habited by human beings. Mm. The kind of uh, uh, facilities they have for the maintenance of, their, of themselves and their families yes. are below what is uh, possible for uh, ordinary people. You know? Yes, so the injustice within the security institutions themselves, the officers, those who have access to uh, resources, to deploy resources and so on, look after themselves. Even their salaries now have been mm, they are increased. Uh, uh, yes. have been changed mm. completely different from uh, the, the ordinary people. Yes. But even before that, it's not a question of salaries, it's a question of access to the, to, to the bag where the money is. And those, the officers, have greater access. Yes. They are given money for intelligence, to, 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 to do intelligence work, to do uh, operations, to do what, uh, which uh, obviously uh, can be seen in how they themselves live. You know? Uh, what they have been able to do with public sources, resources, that are not meant for their welfare, but they have access to it. But the ordinary soldiers uh, uh, in the police, in the, in the army, who don't have that kind of access are destitute, literally. They, they can't make ends meet. That's why we saw the likes of private uh, subity shooting the minister. Yes, even the salaries that they are supposed to get, you know, the inadequate salaries, because even if they got all whatever they are entitled to, it would not be enough. But even that small they are entitled to is cut. That sum is taken to Wazalendo, there is a, a circle where they take some. Uh, the, 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 the sum is cut, I don't know for what, you know. So it, it's, it's unbelievable the way soldiers live. And therefore, the stress we were talking about in the general public is even worse amongst the soldiers because soldiers are supposed to be on duty 24 hours. 
all of them, whether policemen, whether uh, military, they are supposed to be on duty 24-7. So unlike teachers who are badly paid, but work only eight hours a day and can go and tend to their gardens and uh, maybe have private coaching of uh, other students and so on. So, so these soldiers don't have that, that, that opportunity. They are controlled 24 hours. Their time is controlled 24 hours a day and paid nothing. So how do we expect them to survive? I, I heard Mr. Museveni saying that uh, soldiers must be able to, must be ready and willing to sacrifice. That's how we have built the army. You know, we, we are an army of sacrifice, of, 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 for sacrifice, or, or patriotism. That's absolute nonsense, you know. That is possible, yes, if you are a militia in the bush, because then whatever food you gather, you can share together. You, can, you only don't pay rent. Nobody is even paid. <laughs> Nobody is going to the market. <laughs> you, know, you, are, you are comparing totally different things. And of course in the bush, you, you know, there are no terms. You, you, you enter by yourself, there is no recruitment process, qualifications, what you, that you go through to be recruited. Uh, that you, even while in service, there are no uh, regulations on when you will retire and uh, so on. But in this formal army, in the regular army, you know that you have entered, but you, you are also retiring at this point. Mm -hmm. So what will you do in your retirement if you have not used your years to also prepare for retirement? But even while in service, the, the, we have a, a, a military actually that has continued to be run like a militia, mm. you know, because otherwise in regular forces, they are planned, soldiers are planned for mm. when you can marry so that you can, you can have married quarters where you can live with your wife. Otherwise, if you are unmarried, you are in unmarried quarters, which are totally different from the other ones. Uh, and, uh, 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 and so on. Here, everybody is living in their own shack. You can talk uh, about the, 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 the promotion structure. There, there are some levels where uh, an officer will reach at a certain age and they say, okay, if you, have, if you are 40 and you are a captain, you are allowed to, to, to retire. Not you are allowed. Mm. Actually, it is in the terms and conditions of service. Mm. How you progress. But these things are being floated by the UPD. But that's what I'm saying, that it's run as a militia. It's not run as a regular force. Mm. Mr. Museveni, I, I, and, and understandably, because you see Mr. Museveni has never been a member of a regular force, really. He has never done training of a regular force. He has only done training of a militia, of a guerrilla force. He has never served as a member of a regular force. Uh, so his concepts are concepts of uh, a, a militia. <laughs> and that's what, <laughs> that's what he expects yeah. the force to remain yeah. as. Mm. Uh, and, and yet he claims to be professionalizing it. You can't be professionalizing a force that is not regularized professionalization goes with regularization. Mm. So you must have clear and followed terms of service. How a soldier should know how they will be trained, when and how they will be trained, when they will be promoted, what terms they will enjoy. And they should be followed mm. across the board. But now you find a sergeant has a house, a major, has no house. <laughs> a sergeant has a car, a major is on foot. You know, th that whole chaos is the chaos that creates the kinds of problems that we have. Okay. So, yeah. in the regularized force, the problems is the almost impossible command and control mm. of a force that is guarding 
uh, you know, the, the, the privileged. Yes, sir. But secondly, a force that has the worst form of uh, terms and conditions under which they serve. So, without those being changed, we can, without doubt, prepare ourselves for worse to come. Wow, we are already in that worse to come. But uh, Doctor, allow me read some of the messages here that our listeners and viewers are uh, sending in. Continue sending in these messages. Thank you so much. I still have retired Colonel Doctor Kiza message. We've been talking about the issue of gun violence. And uh, before we delve into uh, the budget for 2023-2024, allow me read some of your messages. Uh, there is a gentleman called Taremwa Jackson. He says corruption can't let this country reach standards you are imagining. Kampala has KCC areas responsible for road maintenance and others and even earning a lot of money yet Kampala is full of road road potholes. Dr. Samuel Shaku, uh, Samuel Shaku says, Dr. Uh, Frankie Lop Wakiso Busolo Butija live. Thank you so much for watching Frankie. Uh, Clergy Mike Trump says watching from Ibanda representing. Thank you so much. Malcolm Smith says thank you doctor. I always pray for God's blessings upon your tremendous efforts. It's only that it's only that few self-seeking by years killed your struggle. Asimwe Debra, this is Emma, your brother. Uh, Segirinya Joseph, watching live from Najoki Gomba. Thank you so much. Asimwe Debra uh, is uh, watching. Besige Holik, he says, Kano, the cabal that rules over Uganda is a dangerous one. They are deadly parasites, so he says. Um, Diamukama Gerald says, I'm here, Kano. Uh, Kano, NRM Junta has built less than 5,000 kilometers of tarmac roads in Uganda in the last 38 years. Each year, it means NRM Kabal has built 130 kilometers of tarmac road. Isn't it so shameful to have thieves in power? Who celebrates building only 130 kilometers in a country every year? Mm. I have uh, Emma Kamgisha. Thanks, Doctor, for the time you sacrificed to educate us and open our minds. God's blessings. Uh, Kane Simon says he is streaming live from Bale. Thank you so much, uh, Simon, for watching us from Mbale. Uh, uh, Kabenge Senyonjo Ahmed. Mitiana Municipality, we are tuned in. Thank you so much, Dr. Kiza Vesja, for the sacrifice you do for Ugandans. Kwetuli Abebu Solo Butija. Uh, William Musanje says, this is one of the greatest sons Uganda has ever produced. What a man, plus an exclamation mark. Uh, sorry, Mr. Moderator, we can't suggest that what we, ca what, what we can't suggest. What, we, what can be done is to fix infrastructure in Uganda. What needs to be fixed is the regime by removing the cabal from power. You're asking for suggestions as if the junta cares about your suggestions. Kano Kiza Vestia has said everything. Why doesn't the junta listen? Mm. Yes. Uh, this is Kam Kama Tito. Always good to see a healthy doctor. Malcolm Smith is saying he's watching from Fort Porto. Kindly talk about public uh, starving servants such as drivers. Uh, is there anybody who is not uh, surviving now? There is Ukasha Muguluma Kiza. Mm, he says, Doctor, it's a good work you are doing, but I'm seeing a problem which is before us, before our struggle, and that is the opposition. We are having a self-centered characters. What are you going to do over that? Mm. He continues to say electricity, I guess. Yeah, that was the problem. Uh, dig digital, okay. Uh, Kano, where have you gone? Have you been arrested? Digitalk tell us. Uh, Kamuka Matito, very educative. Not sure how we, we are going uh, to live without a president like Doctor. We need a president like him for 10 years uh, of transition from the Junta government to a people's government. Uh, Peter Barongo, Mr. President, thanks for the deliberation. Um, I'm in Hoima this week and greetings from the people here. Uh, Tarema Jackson, the wars in Congo and other nearby countries like South Sudan with poll boards in, with Uganda, no one can stop the importation of guns illegally. And this has been said by various people. Mm. 
There is Edwin Kanye Hamba says, welcome back, Dr. Uh, Emma, I think I'll just go with you. Um, Emma, recently we saw the son of, Pres of Museveni inspecting roads in Kampala, yet the Kampala mayor can't be given a chance to do so. All in, all in all, ministers need total independence, ministries need total independence and transparency. They should not be state-driven ministries. Uh, we need, yeah, thank you. I'll, uh, lastly, I'll come with uh, Elas Jason. Watching from Bushenyi, basing on the current issues in the country, this shows the bleeding state. It, uh, if it's a bomb, it's about to explode. I now fear being near anybody holding a gun. People are mentally unstable. Yes, I can read, I will be reading more of your messages subsequently as we continue uh, with the show because we don't have a lot of time. Doctor, any comments you want to, what you want to make? You know, just to thank them for the, you know, enthusiasm in um, um, watching and contributing uh, mm. to the program. Please keep it up. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, most of them are simply saying, you know, mm. what I have been saying is, yes. uh, is correct. Mm. Uh, of course, others are chipping in uh, uh, other forms of injustice, like the one who has just said, you know, mm. Muhozi can inspect Kampara roads when the, ro the Lord Mayor <laughs> <laughs> may not. Uh, and when the Lord uh, Mayor cannot pray. <laughs> yes, and, uh, and, and those, those injustices, you know, are, yeah. are all over. Uh, indeed, Mohozi can hold rallies uh, when he's doing so in violation of the law. He's doing so illegally, protected. I told you that our forces are mm. protect mm. Uh, the, the mafia state mm. because Mohozi, who is going to address people in Fort Porto, in Kabal, in Mbale, illegally, is protected. If any of the people who are supposed to do so legally, <laughs> you know, we, 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 like party leaders, if Chagulaji went, if uh, Amri Atoboy went, if uh, Mugisha Muntu went, they, those would be promptly attacked by the same force that protects uh, Muhozi, <laughs> that protects the, 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 the one committing crime. Uh, is protected, and the same force that protects him will attack those who are acting according to law. So that is the, that is the, you know, the, the same injustice that flows through all the systems that we were talking about. Okay. Uh, Doctor, let's delve into the, the other conversation. At a time like this, the budget has been, uh, has been uh, approved by Parliament, and this budget continues to have humongous uh, amounts, uh, $454 billion, uh, for State House. There is classified expenditure there. Uh, there is the furniture the President uses. There is uh, the veterinary. I don't know when we started having farms at, at, uh, uh, at State House. When you even look at the money that State House is paying for water bills, electricity bills, uh, the, the clothes that the President is wearing, it feels like we are in... Uh, 1789 France at the time, you remember Marie Antoinette and mm. how, uh, mm. let me not just speak, speak, but doctor tell me, what, what is your general comment on, on the budget? You see, first of all, I have said uh, many times before mm. that the whole process of budgeting is really a waste of time. The budget in this country is determined by Mr. Museveni, not by these characters in the parliament. They, they have no role, really. Yes, they, they make themselves busy, say this, say that, but at the end of the day, it is what Mr. Museveni wants that will become the budget. And that's why, indeed, the lion's share is in his house. And uh, you are talking about 450 billion that is going to State House. That will be eaten in the first three months, the 450 billion. And I can bet you that in the, after three months, they will be back for a supplementary. That 450 billion will be eaten in three months. It is just there for uh, the comfort of everybody that, you know, some has been put there. 
So the money that we see allocated to different places does not go there. What actually happens, and one should look at what we call the budget out time. The budget is an estimate. Yeah. Estimates of income mm. and expenditure. Yeah. Let's, at the end of the year, look at the real. The reality that was spent. Yes, what was spent on in 2022-2023. What was actually spent on. In the last budget, State House was budgeted for 600, I think, and 80 billion. Not 400. It was 680 billion in, the, in this financial year, the one in which we are, we are in. Yes. That was eaten a long, long time ago. We have, uh, I think they have been given supplementaries now three times <laughs> this year. <laughs> the, the 680 was consumed a long, long time ago. Yeah. I, 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 I saw uh, uh, my friend uh, Charles Obo mm. tweeting, uh, I, 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 I don't know the source of his information, but he was saying that actually what uh, State House consumed was uh, about, I, I think, two trillion in this year. Mm. He was calculating that in effect they, they spend uh, uh, they, they, they were spending 258 million per hour. The amount they spend, 258 million per hour. What is chewed in the state house? But, but state house has to be president and his wife and his children. It's the home. It's the home, it's of, the the home president. of the president. Yes. Yeah. Not the president's office. President's office mm. has its own budget. State house is a and that's place. why, you know, it's... A, uh, we live in uh, uh, it's 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 no country can be managed like ours and and it continues you know for this is why i've been saying that we are the biggest fools on this globe those who inhabit this country no people can be managed and run and or governed as we are for 40 years and we are there just looking you know it's, 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 it's unbelievable, you know, that now in this budget, which uh, uh, you are reading about, the one beginning in, uh, Next, in, in July, July yeah. that uh, uh, Mr. Seven is going to have 120 billion to give whoever he wants. Yeah, donations. Yes, that he will give, it will be money. Uh, for him to give, how can that be? You know? And these donations have been coming in every state yes. budget. Yes, why, why should we collect money, my money, to give you, to choose whom to hand it over to? You know? Public money must be spent for the public good we all determine. That's why parliament should be the, 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 the body that appropriates. Because parliament is supposed to be a representation of all of us. Mm. If it was possible, we could all be in the parliament to determine how the money we collect should be used. Mm. Because it is our money. Now, we collect our money, you take it and decide now, full figure, uh, buy full figure a, a, a vehicle, 400 million here, uh, buy so and so a house uh, here. You know, our money you know, and you find people dying. There is not even panado in a health center. Uh, kids have no uh, school fees because they contributed their money to you to, 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 to give to the full figures of this world. And, 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 and everybody, you know, is just there quiet, dying quietly in their house, in their homes. We are fools 100%. When you we talk, can... they will shoot you, doctor. You know, Pardon? When, when, you shoot, when you talk. Absolutely you... not. Because first of all, uh, let me tell you, mm. the people who would be shooting us are shooting themselves. Mm. 
yeah, even recent, now. <laughs> recently they are now shooting themselves. Because they themselves are desperate. You see? Mm. Except that even they themselves, you know, uh, you see, uh, uh, management of armed forces can lead you to do things that are against your will. That, that's why they, they are called disciplined forces. You are disciplined to follow order, In command. Mm. But they are suffering more than us. But if we all, you know, how many are they? You know, mm. all these soldiers, they are maybe about a, a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand, make it a hundred and twenty, because there are many who are even not registered, I think. Even if they are hundred and twenty, if we, even one million people, if one million people stand up, how can a hundred thousand <laughs> of us, you know? Mm. Yes. The, they may be ordered one day to shoot at some people, but uh, uh, they, 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 they will not uh, succeed in, you know, suppressing everybody. Mm. And, 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 and so, and that's where the country should focus. We, no, let's not spend our time that we are discussing a budget. There is no budget. Uh, even the, what you are talking about, uh, 120 billion, million, uh, uh, I think classified now in the state house is 170 billion uh, classified. That is classified. We don't know where that money is going to go, by the way. That, that, is, is, that is also a slash. State house, it, nobody it's knows it's a slash fund for Mr. Museveni because you cannot say money for intelligence is in the office is in the president's office. Mm. That's where money for intelligence is. What classified? In defense, there is money for classified mm. equipment. If you want to buy things that are classified, it is in defense. In the president's home, what is classified there? The president's home should budget for meals for visitors who are coming to state house, maintaining state house uh, that, that, that is all that uh, you know state house should but here you find that state house itself is a government are is, we are they the ones supposed to pay for for the cows or the animals that the president has at his home because apparently we are paying veterinary 184 million all are we the ones who are supposed to to, to do that you see, this the, the, the Museven has turned the state house into, as I have said, another government. Uh, so just like he had turned the SFC, the force that guards the state house, into another army. So he has a government within a government. And his government, he does not want oversight over it. Mm. So he wants to have money there, which he can use at his discretion. Uh, whether he takes it, whether he just uh, uses it to pad his mattress so that he sleeps on money, maybe. Uh, and you may find actually he has a mattress of money to uh, feel comfortable that uh, indeed he is controlling money. Because there is absolutely no reason why public goods and public services over which a president is supposed to oversee mm. should not be transparently dispensed, you know, and indeed controlled, controlled by us, the owners of the, of the money, you know. We must have a say, you know. You cannot take billions that he, you will determine how you, you want to, billions of our money. But have you realized, Doctor, that we also have a, a common phenomenon in this country that we speak about money like that, like billions. They've just stolen 54 billions. And we, we have quantified it to be small when we say billions. But when, we, when we're talking about a billion, that is a thousand million million shillings. Yes, three billion is a million dollars. That's a million. Think <laughs> you have quantified it in the right way. So this road that we have here where you've come is actually 15 billion. So that would be around four million dollars for yes. that particular 12, 10 kilometer or 7 kilometer road. And, and we, we play around with figures like that. 
and we feel it's it's okay. But doctor, we are talking about. But that's why I say we are fools. You know, that's why I say we are a country of fools. And the sooner we wake up and shed our foolishness and fight for our survival, the sooner the country will be better. If we continue the way we are, I have been saying, and I continue to say, we shall perish as a people. We shall become uh, extinct. And we shall not be the first people to become extinct. Mm. Any people who don't think die. I have been saying, you know, if you don't think you die, you, you perish, you know. That's why even dinosaurs perished. Dinosaurs were huge animals, but with small heads. <laughs> and they, there is none surviving now. <laughs> because they did not think. If we do not think in this, we, we shall become extinct. And not just Uganda, but Africa. We are, there is an existential threat for our continent. That we are here, you know, in this age, day and age. But we cannot make anything for ourselves. President Zubin one time said that even a fool can survive in Uganda. Only for a short while, you know. Yes, for a short while. Like the, I have told you, you know, the, uh, those dinosaurs also survived for some time and roamed, uh, roamed the earth, but they became extinct. Mm -hmm. We are, we, we, you know, we are living in an existential threat. You saw COVID when it came. Mm -hmm. We could only, you know, beg others to save us. We have no capacity. Even up today, our vaccine has never been. It will not be. It's just another lie to foolish people. Mm. <laughs> that Musedero is about to produce a vaccine. A vaccine. It's not there. Mm. You know, that's but not how what, vaccines what, are produced. What is then the role of our members of parliament? Because now if you're saying that the members of parliament are just um, politicking. Yeah, because they are just representatives of fools. What can they do? It starts with us. Because they, they come from us. Mm. They should be serving us. We should be directing them mm. what to do. Yes. They, they should not be the ones to, uh, to, 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 to act on their own. They should act on our behalf. Mm. So we should, it starts with us. Yeah. If, you have a, if, if we are foolish, how can members of parliament be wise? Because they are a representation of who we are. Yes, absolutely. So, the population of Uganda must wake up and regain control of the country first because we are servants mm. in our country. We must regain control of the country mm. and then what you were talking about will be possible. Then we can plan for our country. Mm. We have no power to plan for the country now. Okay. The ones who hold the country are the ones who make their plans for themselves. So it must start there. We must wake up, mm. wake everybody up. Those who are in Salamba just uh, clapping that there is parish model, that they are bringing parish model. Let, let me inform and, those ones who are in Salamba. Uh, this budget needs another 22 trillion shillings in terms of loans to finance it because as government they only have 25. Remember we are planning for 52. So we need another 22 trillion, and this has to come uh, from loans and then the, the, the increase on, in domestic revenue. Already our indebtedness is at mm. about 85 trillion. Yes, yes. So we are going to put 20 something, yes. it will become 100 and something and some, trillion. Yeah, yeah we, are, we, we already passed the threshold you know? for any decent uh, country. Our budget, if it is 50, it means we will be indebted twice what our. Uh, annual capacity is, you know. Exactly. So, but the problem is not even just indebtedness because borrowing is perfectly legitimate. Mm. The problem is what you are borrowing for mm. because we are borrowing to fund that nonsense in the state house. That's what we are borrowing for. We are borrowing for 
paying all kinds of useless things that are all over the place, you know. Uh, the, uh, the ones I told you who are being guarded. If all the RDCs didn't wake up tomorrow, Uganda would continue moving as it is. But you can imagine the vehicles they are driving all over the country, the soldiers that are guarding them all over the country, the, the other serv uh, servants they, that attend to them, the secretaries, what, what, what. But doctor, we have a lot of civil servants, so a lot of people getting money. Yes, who are, who are, who are not... Because uh, what is the use of 529 members of parliament so today? So all that is a patronage system. It's, it's, it's what I told you, that mm. the purpose of our plans, our budgets, is to see how to maintain the king in power. That is the main thrust of everything that the country does today. How do we keep the king in power? So the patron, that it is patronage system. Uh, so that whoever would want to say, but this is wrong, I don't worry, you become another DC of the other place. If the districts are finished, uh, let's create a new one so that we give some people. Because look, we have a PISO, we have a GISO, we have a DISO, we have an LC1, LC2, we have an LC5, we have an RDC, we have an RCC, uh, deputy RDC, we, we have members of parliament. Good. Yes, it's a huge administrative structure that is deliberate uh, to uh, calm down all those elites that would otherwise mm. be challenging the system yes. to give them some place to, 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 to also pad their nests at the, exp uh, at the expense of the public. Mm. And that is uh, uh, why everybody else is hurting. And eventually, even those who think they are beneficiaries of this criminal state, they will eventually be consumed by it. Uh, because, first of all, if they themselves need services, they will not be there because they have been destroyed. You saw the other day, Minister Bariomunsi, when he collapsed in his village, they rushed him to a hospital that had nothing. A helicopter had to go and rescue him <laughs> from, 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 from Kanungu. Yes, but even to Kampala, where he, he's being brought, he, he, he's not any better than Kanungu, you know? Mm. So eventually they will be consumed themselves. Yeah. And if it is not that, the angry people, uh, very soon, I'm sure, very soon, the angry people will consume them will just eat them up, uh, as it has happened elsewhere in the world. It will not be a surprise, I hope, to anybody that the population of Uganda says, no, this has gone too far, if you want to kill us. Once people start killing themselves, how can they fear being killed by those they want to remove? And there's also a growing sentiment where you see people, social media users, really is now speaking more. We even have people who are recording videos and they're saying, okay, if you're, you saw a one driver. Uh, yes, of the yes, 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 yes. It feels Kisa like it's, we are at a tipping point. Yes, Kisambila. 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 I understand he was, uh, he was arrested. I don't know why he would yes, be. Yes, he was arrested. <laughs> I don't know why he would be released. arrested, but Kisambila said, look, and. Uh, 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 and, and the judiciary had the task to explain themselves, you know. Say, this is what we are getting. How can we survive? How do you expect me to wake up and come to the steering to drive you when you, you are getting 15 million I'm getting and I'm getting 200,000? What sort of uh, country is that? So uh, the, 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 the judges would have to drive themselves. But you because see, he has put them on notice. He said, I, I, we shall enter these vehicles below the, the trailers. Yes. <laughs> we shall, we shall. But, but there's an, there an equality doctor in this society. And I think you realize it. You go to some of these uptown restaurants. Um, you realize that a meal that one person consumes in, a, in one meal, this person comes and consumes for two, is going to pay the salary 
of that the, the lady who's serving them. A meal this person is consuming in just one day. Go to those uptown restaurants. If right? even the lady serving them ha has any salary at all, some of the people who serve in these restaurants and bars, their only pay are the tips. When you have paid your bill and what remains, you say, okay, here is 1,000. That's what they live on. They, the people who employ them don't give them anything. There are many who are serving in bars, in restaurants, without any form of pay, you know? Mm. And yes, the price per plate mm. maybe is 100,000, Yes, but uh, there is uh, no, no pay for the one serving. So the injustice, it is the injustice in the whole system. People have been fighting to say, at least let's have a minimum wage. Mm. Even that... President Seven came out and said the minimum wage won't work because it will deter investors from coming to invest in Uganda. From coming to uh, use the slaves <laughs> he has put at their disposal in Uganda because that's, that's exactly what he has done. Mm -hmm. You know, like the slaves were exporting to, to the Arab countries. Open day slavery, you know. Because in, in, in some of those uh, Arab places, they, they parade them in the morning. They bring them in the morning. Mm. And the people who want uh, slaves indeed come and uh, look at them uh, and shop. <laughs> those who are not taken, they have headed back to where they are kept. <laughs> and, and brought back the following day to the market. You know, it's it's it's... And in a country that is the most, possibly the most endowed country on earth, that such things are happening is really extremely sad. So we are going. Yeah, but you know, where we should focus, uh, Edgar, is mm. the what needs to be done to get out of this, mm. you know? Mm. And let's come out from the book of lamentations. Yes, let's go to the yes, book of yes, Acts. yes. What mm. what needs to be done? Because and that's where part of my frustration lies. Because what needs to be done is not difficult to perceive. You know, I've been telling people, you know, that for example, we can close down this country until those who are armed and holding us a stronghold accept that we are the masters. We can close them down. You know? Yes, it's possible right. everybody, wherever they are, to organize themselves and we say, this country now closes. We can close it down until we agree on how it works for us. And no, if people decide to close all these roads all over the place, who, who, nobody with guns will open. When we had, when we had started walk to work, people would close Gayaza Road especially, mm. and nobody would open it up. And these were a few people, you know, but they would close Gayaza Road and nobody would open it up until they themselves uh, uh, give the way. So it is possible to organize and do the needful uh, to, to cause a reset of the country to agree to say, okay, now this can no longer continue. It ends here. So how do we organize ourselves now? Which is the transition we have been talking about? You know? First of all, can we think about a transitional governance that does the critical things that need to be done once people regain their control of the control of the country mm -hmm. to make sure we have a new constitutional framework that gives power uh, to all parts of our country uh, in a rational way yes. that builds <clears throat> checks and balances that no one man will you know uh, appropriate all power in the country as has happened and abuse it and do all the things we are, that we put the checks and balances in, the, in, the, in our constitutional framework, that we build institutions that are truly uh, independent public institutions mm. 
that serve the public, not the individuals, mm. that are populated by competent people, not relatives, you know, that can then deliver the goods and services, including preparing uh, to choose leaders mm. that the people would want to govern them and over whom they would have power so that you lead according to their, to their will. Mm. And if you are not leading according to their will, they have power to chuck you. I wish that Uganda, that Uganda will come. No, we have to create it. It is us to create it. Yeah, Doctor, we've come to the end of the, the, the discussion. Our time is fast spent. In just a nutshell, your last remark. Well, it's sad that uh, today we had quite a few interruptions. Uh, mm. But once again, I'm grateful to all of you for really spending time to engage with these uh, conversations around what our country is going through and what we need to do to, uh, to live in a better country that works for all of us. Uh, I, I consider that Uganda is at a, uh, a watershed moment. At a, we are at a, a place where something must give way and how that happens is critical. So please don't leave it to others to determine you. Get involved. Let all of us get involved and procure the end of this misrule and create a transition that can lead to the country that we all want. I wish you a good weekend, blessed weekend, and until next Saturday, be blessed. Thank you very much. I won't add anything on what Doctor has said. Uh, be blessed, but also remember that uh, to stay alive, please stay alive. In Uganda, staying alive is already a win. As long as you're not dead, uh, it is okay. Thank you so much. Please do tune in the evening. I uh, will have the Snap Talk show by Teddy Tenjo Nabukera. Do tune in at exactly 6 p.m. My name is Edgar Matthew Karuhanga. It's always a privilege, Doctor, having you on the show. And just to inform you, Doctor, this show is watched. Many people watch this show. It's, it's really watched and many people give their feedback and uh, it is okay when you, you, you comment about their feedback like you did today. So guys, thank you. Continue sending in those messages. I'll see you next Saturday. It is the Interface Show. My name is Edgar Matthew Karahanga. Good afternoon. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.